am going to be showing you all how to make scalloped cabbage. So I will be taking half a head of cabbage, half of an onion, and one clove of garlic. We're gonna put that into our saucepan and boil it just until tender. And I've already washed and trimmed my cabbage. Isn't it pretty? I try to keep in mind bite-sized pieces because this will be turning into a casserole of sorts. So I do try to make them bite size. That looks like a ton of cabbage, but as cabbage cooks, it shrinks. Let's do our half of an onion. We'll go ahead and take the bottom off. And again, just a rough dice is all we're after. clove of garlic there. People will tell you you've got to dice this up fine. You do not because it breaks down when you're cooking. So a rough little chop and we are ready to roll. I'm going to add water about halfway up my pot and put this on the stove top on um, medium high heat or high medium heat, low high heat. You know, if you've got the numbers on your dial, right around six to seven. <laughs> oh, and I'm gonna let this boil on the stove top for about 10 to 15 minutes till it's just tender. Our cabbage is cooked and now let's do a little seasoning. I've got my salt. I always start with a three finger pinch. That is a trick that a chef friend shared with me some time ago. And uh, like when you do your meats and, and proteins, that three finger pinch is just about the perfect seasoning every single time. Okay, so I've just cracked some nice black pepper in there. Please excuse the dogs in the background. <laughs> it is the Henster Farm, isn't it? Okay, I'm just putting in a pat of butter. I do recommend Real, honest to goodness butter. It might be the southerner in me, I don't know, but I do believe it makes a difference. Taste it before you put it all in. So this does still need a little bit of salt. Don't be afraid to taste your food as you go. How else are you gonna know if your seasoning is correct? I'm going to move this to the back, pull my dish up front, I'm gonna get just a little bit of butter here on my fingers. And I mean just a little. And I'm just gonna grease the inside of my dish to make sure there's gonna be no sticking. Now we're gonna take our cabbage. Now I have um, taken my time to drain this well. I will just slightly under season my cabbage because I'll be adding saltine crackers to this. Not only does it help the flavor and add a, brings added salt, but it is also a thickening agent. And we just give them a good old crumble. Okay, so I've done about 10 crackers there. And now we're gonna repeat the layer. Okay, let's smooth that out. We're gonna do another layer of crackers. layer to be a little bit thicker because I want it to work like a crust. Make sure all 
that cabbage is covered. I'm gonna put just a few more right here. It's just a little light. You don't want too much. You don't want it to feel greasy to the mouth at all. But all we're doing is adding a richness to the flavor here. Then let's grab our milk. You're gonna pour very slowly because you don't want to disturb those crackers on top. So slow and easy. I always tend to go around the edges first. I don't know why. It's just what this girl does. And we're just putting in enough milk until we start to see it along the edge. Looks like we're gonna need a little smidge more. So depending on how much cabbage you've cooked, the shape of your pan, your milk quantities will vary. This is ready. We're gonna pop this in a 350 degree oven for about 35 to 45 minutes. Um, you'll know it's done when the top is nice and golden brown and there's no liquid that you, you can tilt the bowl and you're not gonna see any liquid. 